All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me in the studio this evening where I am going to attempt to paint. <laughs> Where's he at? That guy and that guy, uh, T Rex dinosaur. Uh, let's see how this is going to turn out for us. I hope it's going to turn out great, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining me here. Um, before we get started, let's talk about supplies. I've got a larger, a bit of a larger sheet of paper. This is, uh, actually, this is Arch's paper. I can tell it's got a watermark on it here. Uh, the paints that I'm using over on my right-hand side are my M. Graham paints, my studio paints. And for the most part, the brushes that I'm going to be using tonight are my Da Vinci Casaneo brushes. Uh, and with that, uh, I think it is time to get started with what we're doing. Uh, I am going to just put an initial wash on this guy. Let me mix up a couple of colors here. Uh, I don't normally do it on this side, but I'm going to put a bit of some browns on this side where I have some neutrals maybe and keep my greens on this side some beautiful greens I like uh, this dinosaur because or this image of this dinosaur because he's got some beautiful you can see him up there he's got some beautiful green tints to him he's got some wonderful browns in there a little um, Ochre uh, down the center of them. Carrie, hello from Australia. <laughs> Literally halfway across the world. Your grandson loves dinos. Everybody loves dinos, and especially the mighty T Rex. The mighty T Rex that may or may not have been a, such a fearsome. <laughs> Such a fearsome dinosaur, uh, if any of the new research is to be believed. I guess the only way we're ever really going to find out is if we go back in time and uh, check him out. So somebody needs to hurry up and invent a time machine so we can all do that. That would be, that'd be really nice. Well, in my part of the world this week, I'll tell you what has happened. Um... It has rained, <laughs> and that's a that's a new thing. Typically, our rain uh, leaves in March and doesn't come back until I don't know late November, early December. Got a little bit of rain, so that's always good. It brought quite a bit of humidity with it, which isn't always good. But for the state of California, I think all of us, and, and I feel that I can speak as a duly elected representative of all California, I think we'll all accept a little bit of extra water. That'd be fantastic to have. We are... <laughs> We are, as a state, the state of California, officially out of our drought, which, which has only lasted five years or so. I don't know, a long time. But I heard on the radio when I was driving home this morning, we are, or, or this afternoon, we are officially out of uh, the drought. So that is always good. Anybody who's joining now, please, please, please. Or anybody who joined before too. I don't know. Thirsty, uh, Carrie, anybody, any, please, as always, I'm going to, I'm going to throw this out there. Please feel free to ask any questions that you like. I love answering questions. Uh, it's part of what makes these live streams so much fun. Usually pretty good about answering just about anything anybody uh, is willing to ask. I don't hold, don't typically hold back too much. 
much. Maybe sometimes I'll hold back a little bit, but it's too hard to remember what you're holding back if anybody asks a second question. So I'm usually pretty upfront. It's 12.35 p.m. there. Oh, it is. So wait, that doesn't seem right. So you're five hours ahead of us? It seems like you would be further along than that. It's 7.35. Oh, no. Oh, hold on. 7.35 here. Am I doing the math right? It's always dangerous if I'm trying to do math in my head. It's not always the best thing. I thought it was five hours to Hawaii. And you guys are further along than Hawaii from us. But I will admit, um, I'm wrong often. <laughs> I'm wrong often. So, Carrie, what else is going on in Australia land? Anything exciting going on over there? This is, this is, of course, your winter, which is my summer. It's always hard for me to imagine how far away. Roughly seven hours. Seven hours. How did I get that wrong? Seven is, seven would be fourteen, which would be two o'clock in the morning. Is that not right? Am I not? I don't know. I'll take your word for it. I'll totally take your word for it. I always thought when I was growing up, when I was little, that you guys had winter, uh, or I mean, that you guys had Christmas at the opposite time of the year than, I, than we had Christmas. <laughs> I was like, well, if their winter is during our summer, they must it follows that their Christmas must be when our I don't know Fourth of July is. What time is it? Where I it is seven. I'm looking at my computer right here. It is seven thirty-seven on my clock right now. 737 in the Pacific time zone. I've never been to Australia, but I would love to go to Australia. Lots of interesting things. December 25th is your Christmas. <laughs> I know that now. <laughs> and you use the same calendar we use. How about that? How interesting is that? <laughs> you know, when, but when you're a little kid and you're growing up, and I grew up in the middle of nowhere, right in very rural Ohio, not a lot of access to a whole lot of things other than, I don't know, maybe the library, right? And uh, so it's, it's seven hours, seven hours. Okay, my math is wrong. Um... You know, and, and when I get to the library, I'm not looking up anything about Australia. I'm looking up, I don't know, fun books or other weird stuff, stuff I can do with my friends or find books for pranks I can pull on my friends or things to re uh, or uh, build or something like that. It's okay. I was I was talking with my daughter um, um, Saturday night, Sunday night. We were on a little car ride, as we do from time to time. We were talking about the radio, and I was like, "Hey, when I was little, I thought all those people singing those songs were live. We're doing it live in the radio station." <laughs> I was like, how do they? How are they able to play all those songs? That is really good. I wish I could do that. 
It wasn't until later, and my my family is uh, my family's a little funny. They probably played along. Uh, it wouldn't dissuade me. They'd let me figure it out on my own, but it wasn't until later that I figured out. Um, there's this thing called a record, <laughs> and they just play different records, and uh, that way they don't have to have people in the studio. But I had seen like live uh, broadcasts and, and whatnot. You are farmers. I fancy myself a farmer, too. Not really a farmer, but I fancy myself a farmer. I've, I raise my chickens. <laughs> I tell everybody I'm a chicken rancher. <laughs> chicken rancher. I have three right now, so I'm not really a rancher. But I tell everybody I'm a rancher. Would love to be. I grew up um, in farming country in Ohio. Had many farms. I used to go and help work on a farmer's dairy farm from time to time. Well, it was a he was a we call him a dairy farmer, but he also did some traditional farming where he I don't know how many acres of land he had, but he would plant uh, all this land in the the spring and then harvest it and I don't know how viable uh, his farm is for that anymore. I, the dairy farm portion of it is still going but the actual the traditional planting of crops and whatnot I don't know if he still does that in this day or to this day all right, I've got just about a whole layer of paint on here. My very first layer. And so far, as long as I can go around this guy's teeth, I'm pretty happy with this. This is pretty good. This is good, I think. I don't really, you know, I feel a little bad. I don't have any real stories to tell on here. Oh, I do have one story. It is not the greatest story in the world, but I do have a story. At work, when we interview uh, for positions there, and I'll just say this as I'm waiting for this to dry up a little bit, uh, we allow, we get into a group for part of the interview and uh, lots of us can uh, can go around the the horn kind of and and ask different questions of the candidate that we're trying that we're thinking about hiring and there's one guy I always asks these uh, screwball questions and you know I think it's great that he does because it really lightens the mood a little bit and uh, one of the questions he always asks is if a dog were to wear pants would they wear it on the front legs, the back legs, or all four? So, um, and he's asked that for a, a year or more of everybody. We all laugh about it, and uh, and so I went. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna paint a, a painting of a dog wearing pants, and so I painted a, a painting of dogs wearing pants and took it over to to his group today, so they can hang it up in their office and. I took it in and showed it to one person who immediately burst out laughing, which is the appropriate response in this case. And uh, that caused everybody else to, to come running to see what was going on. And uh, I think they're going to end up uh, posting it <laughs> in uh, their office. They'll frame it and put it in their office, uh, which really tickles me. I think it's, I think it's great. Love to see it in there. Okay, so let's see. I'm pretty dry. I'm not completely dry, but I think I'm dry enough. I can start putting in some uh, darker areas. Uh, this leg is probably... Uh, this leg is probably dry enough down here. Let's start deciding 
where these shadow areas are at. This is, um, I'm not using blue for these shadows down here. I'm using um, a little bit of olive green. I, I want to keep with that green theme. And uh, just keep that going. If I need to enhance that a little bit, I'll, I'll add a little bit more of that olive green. It's a darker green. And where it gets a little lighter over towards the, the side here, maybe I'll just throw in a little bit of this phthalo green and then let these kind of mix and become, you know, just become a little friendly in here. There we go. And if I want to darken this down a little bit more, I think maybe I'll throw in a little bit of this burnt umber or maybe some sepia. I just want to start teasing out some of the darker areas in here. <clears throat> we've got four people in here right now. Not quite as big a crowd as we've had in the past few weeks, but we've got four people in here. If you're here and you feel uh, up to it, say hello. I would love to, uh, love to hear from you. see and this is going to be actually I'll probably put a little bit of ochre in down here on his feet a little bit let's keep these feet a little bit lighter still with a little green tint but maybe a little bit lighter on down to here something something like that I do have I do have a thank you I need to throw out uh, today Let's see, I'm going to put it up here. There you go. I have to say a big thank you to viewer uh, Kiko. Kiko uh, was kind enough to uh, donate some money to me through coffee, co-fee. Co I'm still not exactly sure how you say it. Um... There's a link down below for anybody who, anybody else who would like to do that. Uh, donated some money to keep the studio going, keep the, <laughs> not necessarily keep the lights on, but keep the paper flowing, keep the paint going, uh, those kinds of those kinds of things that, that take place. Uh, keep me in some um, some drink here. There we go. Um. Uh, uh, so that's always, always uh, a nice surprise when I uh, get an email about that. So, uh, Kiko, I, I want to make sure that I say a big thank you to you for that. And I'm going to keep right on going with this guy. As we come down here, there's some darker shadows uh, down underneath here. And I'm trying to uh, divide, do two things. Divide this guy into some parts that are easily definable. Right, This leg is, is something that is pretty easily definable. And uh, then I'm, I want to keep working in a linear motion so that I can maintain a wet edge. And I, and I never end up with any kind of a tide line. This is quiet tonight. This is, <laughs> you guys are quiet. Everybody's quiet. Got a new, just got a new group of people in here. We, we jumped up to five viewers. Please, anybody who comes in, feel free to say hello, ask some questions. If you don't, I'm just going to keep right on talking and right on painting, and everybody's going to have to just listen to me for the duration uh, that I'm on here painting this evening talk about my 
I'm going to talk about my paints. Uh, I wanted to talk about my paints. What was I going to say about my paints? I don't remember. I wrote some notes out while I was at work uh, the other day of some things I wanted to talk about, and now it seems as though I've forgotten some of those things I wanted to talk about. I think I was going to talk pigment. I was going to talk pigment. The wife of a guy I work with wanted to take up watercolors, which I am totally in favor of. So I gave her a starter pack of, of paints and I was trying to explain to her through, you know, through my coworker, the difference between student grade and professional grade paints I'm not sure I got all of it right, but I'm pretty sure I got a large portion of uh, the difference between them correct. And for all the major manufacturers, big difference is the amount of filler and binder agents that are in your paint. Right, manufacturers like M. Graham, Daniel Smith, Holbein, Sennelier, all of those type of manufacturers, they uh, have a very highly pigmented. Old Holland is another one. Very highly pigmented paint. Ground super fine, which... Uh, help prevent some caking, right? And um, and that's all held together with a minimum of, of binders. Uh, some companies use different binders, and that's okay. Uh, Daniel Smith and M. Graham, I know, both use honey as binders. Or uses a... Uh, their own version of a binder. It's a pure synthetic binder, uh, but it's it's a wonderful binder, uh, nonetheless. Let's see. I've got a bit over here. I want to put some dark on as a second layer here, um, and then there's oh. Now, see, I'm not going to remember the name of it. I was going to say xanthan gum, but xanthan gum is not quite right as a binding agent. Oh, look at that. That kind of looks, uh, that kind of looks right. Does it not? Let's get a little bit, come on, let's get some other color in here. Again, we're using mostly uh, my... Uh, olive green here. I like my olive green. There's a bit of phthalo green mixed in and just maybe a touch, just a touch of um, azo green. Azo green makes it a little brighter and a little a little lighter. Gives it a, a, a warmer glow to what we're looking at. And I do need to have something on the opposite side. You can't have something... You can't have a, a a low light on only one side. If you do, then you don't see things as round. You just see it as, um, you know, two dimensional, like it's on a slope or something. You gotta have you gotta have a bit on the other side. Ah, oh, there we go. Yeah, that's a good tail going up there. Liza, stopping in quickly. <laughs> Rex is looking very good. Uh, Liza, are you... If you say you're stopping by quick, I get it. Are you the one that got the brush show? Is that you? 
I want a, I want a brush out story. <laughs> I want a brush out story. I'm going to put a little bit of uh, color down here on Rex's uh, belly down here. <clears throat> Here we go. Come on. A little color down there. Maybe there's even a little bit of green that, that bleeds through. Good, good, good. Uh, it was not me, but I have wishes. <laughs> I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to remember who it was. I thought it was you that ordered the brush-o. I need a brush-o report. <laughs> I was thinking maybe... Uh, one of these weeks, I'll just do a brush -o stream. It's such a weird, uh, interesting uh, medium that it could easily get its its own uh, its own stream, and we could all get a little bit more uh, information. No, you just wanted the sailboat. You know what? Honestly. <laughs> when I was trying to uh, figure out what to paint tonight, I actually stopped on a couple of pictures of a, of a boat. And I was like, oh, I'm going to paint this. And then I went, wait a minute. Didn't I just do a boat? I had to stop and think. I think I just did a boat. And I'm like, yeah, I did, that. I did a boat last week. <laughs> you think that would be fun? You think the brush -o stream would be fun? It would be fun, wouldn't it? Paint around this guy's fingers. I'm trying to get a little dark over here, but paint around his fingers. Right? If you can see up there, you can, I'm sure you can't see all that well. It's a it's a small spot over there. Um, there's a there's a big dark area, uh, right right around his hand, right like right under his armpit over there. I'm trying to capture that. It's such a small little area over there. I'm having a hard time doing it. I think that's probably going to do it right there. I think I just got it. Now the rest of that is his arm. And there we go. Carrie, I have that and I don't like, but I'm no expert. I think it's personal preference. Uh, Carrie, you have brush -o and you don't like the brush -o. <laughs> brush -o is, brush -o is, <laughs> brush -o is weirdo. It is. It's, it's totally personal preference. Um, I am in no way, shape or form a master of brush -o. I will readily admit it's a you either like or you don't. That's true. Uh, tell us about your Rex's personalities. <laughs> okay. Um, yes, in true Bob Ross fashion, I need to. I need to think of a story for this guy, don't I? What is my Rex story? Well, I'm going to start with this. The first part of my Rex story. Is that he's not really a, a T Rex. He's a cousin of the T Rex. But from what I could see, I, but I liked this pose better. And I thought, well, you know, there's probably only a handful of people in the world that would be able to look at this straight away and know that it's not a T Rex. I mean, I certainly wouldn't uh, be able to do that. I would have no idea whether this was an actual T-Rex or not. And it turns out it's not. But I liked, I liked the pose that this guy has. Like he's looking, like he's facing this way and he's looking back this way. And, and, and I know I'm stalling. I, I'm stalling. <laughs> I'm, I'm stalling a little bit coming up with this story. But, um... Um, I, I do the same thing with birds when I paint them is I'm always looking for or I'm not necessarily looking for the right bird to paint, right? Because 
if you're looking for the right picture of something to paint, you're going to be looking for a long, long time. You're probably going to be looking for a long, long time. It's going to take you forever to find right that exact pose of that exact bird that you want to paint or the exact whatever it is you're trying to paint. So I, I found the pose that I liked, and then I went, well, it's, it's in the family of a T-Rex. I could probably make it look pretty much like a T-Rex. And, um, and I think he does look like a T-Rex. Uh, the, the big difference between, the, that, the, between that guy and this guy, uh, who's a, who, who looks more T-Rexes, Rex-ish, is this big hump over his eye. You see the one that's that's there, this kind of, it's way low. And all the pictures of Rexes that I saw, they have this huge, um, not brow ridge, what do you call it? Uh, there's this huge ridge over their eye anyway. I don't know, it's not a brow ridge, but uh, this huge ridge right there. And that was the biggest difference I could see. And so I was like, well, I can take this general pose and do that. Let's see. You could have called him Tex. I just called him Rex. I could have called him Tex. I should I should paint a cowboy hat on him. He could be Tex. <laughs> Tex the Rex. Hat for a very short amount of time named Rex, who I very much liked. Um, sadly, Rex didn't make it. Rex got some terrible liver disease and passed away way too young, but Rex was wonderful. Every time I hear the name or the word Rex, I always think of my cat. So uh, this guy, what I think happened with this guy, this is, this is my story. You see how his tail is so up in the air? The eye hump. The eye hump. That's it. His eye hump. You know exactly what I'm talking about. You are obviously a rexologist to recognize the eye hump. I got it. I know exactly what an eye hump is. I just didn't know the rest of you knew. Uh, but the story of this guy is, I'm just going to tell you, and I, and, I, and I know. See, his tail is all up in the air like this, right? He's turning around. He's looking. His tail is now pulled up in the air like this. Um, because he was walking along and uh, somebody stepped on his tail behind him. Somebody was just just off of the paper over here, just over there. There's, there's somebody over there, probably one of those brontosaurs. You know how they are. And, uh, and they stepped on his tail and now he's angry about it. I mean, he's not angry, mad, like I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, bite you in half and eat you but he's he's angry he's ah oh, man somebody stepped on my tail he's more or maybe frustrated is the better word to use right he's frustrated that somebody stepped on his tail so he's pulled his tail back as far as he can and uh and he's looking back at the guy going come on man you stepped on my tail <laughs> i don't know does that help <laughs> don't you agree our painting sh should have some yes they should they all should have stories and eye humps. <laughs> they should definitely have eye humps. In fact, I'm going to work on this guy's eye hump right now while I have some green paint and it's still a little bit wet right there. They do. Everything needs to have a story. It's a good story that makes the world go around, right? We all like to hear good stories. We all like to tell good stories. The red behind the teeth is, oh, up here? It really makes them stand out, doesn't it? They have to stand out. See, he's got... I think that's plenty of paint for right now. He's got... Um, it's like dark underneath that eye hump right there, right up until that edge. It's going to continually blend some of this out. 
And what I'm hoping is going to happen is it's going to push that eye back deeper inside his, his head right there. It's starting. It's, it's back there a little bit. It's maybe not quite as far as we want it to be. But it'll get there. I feel like I'm getting to the point where I should not maybe put quite so much on here. Um, and, and wait and do a second layer, or maybe a third layer even. Let's take a little bit. There you go. Now, there you go. Now that's more of a defined ridge right there, huh? <laughs> uh, let's see. What else can we do on this guy? I'm flipping back and forth between brushes quite a bit here. He's got some... Uh, Give him a little color uh, down through here. Maybe a little, let's not leave this all the same color here. Let's give him a little bit of this ochre right in through here. And then a little bit of this dark right up at the top again. Should help to round his snout over a little bit. Come on. Shoot, let's go in with a little different color in on that snout. There we go. So I noticed on the, the painting I did uh, over the weekend, the dog paint, the aforementioned dog painting, if you... We're here for that part of the conversation. I painted a dog in pants uh, for a friend of mine, or some friends of mine, I guess, more than more than one. And uh, and I noticed that um, so part of my painting, part of my painting was seemed like it had gotten a little stodgy because um, I tried to get you know, too much color on it and didn't leave some lighter areas. Oh, who's here? Natalie is here. Good evening, uh, Natalie. Thank you for joining. <laughs> you can you can see I'm going to master a, 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 another painting. I am going to be a T-Rex master. Master of T-Rex. <laughs> if only, Right. I'm going to get Cretaceous on this thing. <laughs> Wait. Maybe, are they Jurassic or Cretaceous? Or Triassic? Uh-oh. I don't know. Is there another period in there maybe I missed too? <laughs> I love this. General Best of All Watch because I get to see the building of it. Oh, absolutely. Well, so that's a thing, right? Um, I mean, that's a, that's a legit, uh, thing that you don't always get to see with a lot of, a lot of painters. And honestly, it has frustrated me in the past from time to time, uh, because, um, you'll see them put down a wash, which is fine. Right. That's perfect. We all, we put down washes for everything. And then the scene will cut. And they'll have, <laughs> you know, three layers of something down there. Or they've done two different things and they just cut back. And I get that too because uh, lots of times that makes it easier as you're editing. But it doesn't always make it better for everybody who's watching. Uh, especially if you're trying to learn because they, you, you, if you skip a step in there, uh, other stuff happens. Uh, Belky's... Arredondo, hello. <laughs> I hope I pronounced that right. If I didn't, uh, I, I'm not trying to make fun. I'm not uh, not the best at names. But I think I got it pretty close. I think I got it pretty close. Welcome, uh, Belkies. You're new, or I believe you are new here. Um, I don't believe I've seen you here before. 
So uh, if you if you would like to, um, I mean, I'm not going to ask you to stand up and introduce yourself to anybody, but if you have uh, uh, questions about watercolor, uh, painting, uh, my supplies, uh, my style, how I came to my style, any of that kind of stuff, throw it out there. Uh, if you've got questions about it, probably somebody else has questions about it. Uh, I'm willing and able to talk about it or, or just about anything else. So please just uh, throw those questions out there. Uh, I, guess, I think I always tell everybody, you know, any questions, throw them out there. I love, uh, I love answering questions or giving it a try. Sometimes you guys hit me with questions and I, uh, and I struggle with them a little bit. Uh, see last week where I couldn't remember the difference between warm and cold colors. <laughs> oh, Liza, how did I come about my style? All right, so here's the thing. I'm going to go back a long way here. Are you ready? See, now you asked the big question and now you're in trouble because you're in for a big Long answer. <laughs> so, uh, when I started painting watercolors, um, I tried to emulate uh, lots of different people. I did. And quite honestly, I don't think I should have. Uh, but, so I would change styles, you know, every week. I'd do five or six or seven paintings in one style. And then I'd do five or six or seven paintings in a different style. And uh, then in between doing some of those paintings, then I would do some paintings just, just for the fun of it. Your style is sensorial. <laughs> I'm not sure what sensorial means. Um, so, uh, so I would, I would just, you know, do some painting. And at some point I was, I was trying to, figure out what my style is, right? It's just something we all ought to know. If we're going to be painting in our style, we ought to figure it out. And, uh, and, and I sat down and I was like, well, how do I like to paint, right? Not necessarily can I paint in any style, right? pick one that I'm trying to duplicate. Can I paint in that style or not? Yeah, maybe I can. Maybe I can't. That's not the question I wanted to answer for myself. The question I wanted to answer with myself was, what do I, how do I like to paint or how do I, how does my body like to paint, right? Um, if I just sit down and I stop thinking about painting, what happens? And what I, what I, what I learned about myself was that one of the things I really like to do is uh, graded washes. I love to be able to put a little color on here and let it blend out uh, to a lighter color or put it darker, lighter, darker, some such thing as that. And so I've tried to figure out how I can really incorporate that. I don't try to make things realistic. They come out sometimes realistic. I don't try to make things abstract. Sometimes things come out a little bit more abstract. I don't try to be an impressionist. I don't try to be any thing like that. I try to, um, in my mind, look at this area. Uh, you know, I'm just going to use this area as, as an example. I know it needs to be dark. How can I blend around that to make that look dark? How can I blend around this tail to make that look um, round or round-ish? How can I utilize what I like to do in a watercolor painting to make my watercolor painting look, you know, kind of the way I want it to look? And, and so once I stopped trying to emulate, I don't know, name somebody, Thomas Schaller or, you know, Alvaro Castagnet or Tim Wilmot or... Uh, who are some of the other people? Any any of the other people on on YouTube that you would watch, or Ian Fennelly, or you know, there's lots of people out there um, that have 
a their own style that I've probably tried uh, to emulate at one point or another and and try to put my own spin on it where I look at it and I make these I think I do washes really well right I'm trying to make these beautiful washes and once I started to to figure out how I could put my own washes on things then I started to understand that okay maybe this is the place I need to be as a watercolor artist because that's just when I start to paint something, that's how it turns out. Right? There we go. So light is generally coming this way. A little darker on this side over here. Going to have to make his leg back here even darker. Let's see. Um, so that is, that's the quick and dirty on how I started to come into my style of painting, right? And once I started understanding what I like to do in a painting and not what somebody else uh, does or is good at doing and, and trying to copy that necessarily, then I had to figure out and this is a, you know, it's, it's another thing that's not necessarily easy to do. I had to figure out, uh, for me then, is this a, you know, I'm going to use air quotes because I don't like to, to judge a lot of paintings, but is, is, by my own standards, is this a good painting? Did I do a good job with this? Or is this just a painting where there are colors on there? Um, and so, uh, uh, defining my own style also meant for me, uh, defining what's good and what's bad in a painting is a, <laughs> you've been watching me, you've been watching me for four years. Really? Holy cow. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no. Well, thank you. Uh, I hope I uh, I hope in those four years I've provided uh, a decent amount of entertainment and a, at least a small amount of, um, of uh, watercolor knowledge for you. <laughs> four years, oh, uh, you <laughs> okay? To find okay, good. Uh, and Belky, you uh, you love. Uh, I love how you you love how I paint. I had to I had to <laughs> rethink how that was uh, written in there. So and and you know built into that whole thing. Uh oh, I just splashed some paint on something over here. Built into that whole premise of of me allowing uh, my painting to flourish in my way and defining um, what is. What is good in, in, oh, no, I forgot what I was going to say. Defining what a good painting is for myself and whatnot is, oh, is uh, learning within my style of painting. What I've now defined as my style of painting um, is learning to let go and have a little fun in there. All right, I think we've probably all done it a little bit and probably done it a little bit too much you're trying to learn something new you're trying to do something just outside of your comfort zone and you put a little pressure on yourself and all of a sudden instead of ending up with something cool you uh end up with something that looks a little forced uh, something that you look back on and you go, God, why did I do it this way? Or why didn't I do something that way? And I think uh, allowing yourself to have a little bit more fun, a more freedom in what you do, just allows you to not um, think of things along those terms of, I should have, or I wish I had, or whatnot, and just be in the moment a little bit more for some of the fun of painting. So I, 
So how long, <laughs> where's my clock? How long of a rant did I go on for that, Lisa? Is, <laughs> is that a good answer for you? Uh, it's, painting is, is it, it's, it's a weird thing and it's weird, um, it's even weirder to do something on uh, YouTube or, you know, Twitch or any other social media platform, really, because you put yourself out there to uh, be judged by everybody else. And if you're not comfortable with your own artwork, and if you're not a little comfortable in who you are, it's it's a frightening thing, and it can be... Um, it can be completely terrifying and uh, heart-wrenching and just maddening because there are a lot of people who not necessarily have bad intentions but will say things that will get under your skin or they will make you angry for whatever reason and then, and then you've lost... Uh, all that focus. So another thing I like is that you critique yourself. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm harder on myself than anybody else is. But I, I, but I think I do it in a reasonable way. Right? Uh, I don't have any problem with self-critique. And I don't have any problem with telling myself, I've done something, right? I'm going to put this in air quotes, wrong. I should have done something a different way. But I don't do it in such a way, or I should say, I don't feel as though I do that to myself in such a way that um, I'm I'm harming myself. I don't I don't do it um, uh, in a negative manner. I I do it because um, I think. I think I could do things better on just about any painting I could, right? Be silly uh, to think that there's never room for improvement, but, um, you know, but take it for what it's worth. Painting is not easy. <laughs> you've got you've to take a chance here and there uh, to make some things that are really cool and... If you do, lots of times you end up with stuff that's really cool, and if you if you don't, then sometimes you you wish you had a little bit. Um, if you paint, self critique it. If you do it, yes, yes, yes. Self critique oftentimes is built in, but let's not and 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 let's let's have some self critique, but let's not have um, harmful self critique, right? Let's not beat ourselves up over something that. You know, it's a, it's difficult. I, it makes me mad when people say watercolor is the most difficult medium, and it's so hard, and so whatever. Yeah, it's it's hard. It's it's not easy. But you know what else is hard? I, I like everything else we do, <laughs> right? There's so much about everything that we do that is difficult. So let's not let's not kill ourselves about it too much. Let's just admit it. It's difficult. But the reward is is unbelievable, and we can still have some fun with it, and we can be amazed by what um, by what water does, right? The simplest of mediums, the oldest artistic medium, right? It's it's amazing. Some pigment, some, right? Basically, some ground up rocks or other minerals, right? Or something, ground up flowers, ground up something mixed with a little bit of, in, in this case, honey thrown together on, you know, paper. Paper can be made on it. Doesn't have to be paper. We all paint on paper now. It could be, could be rock. Could be cardboard. Could be sheet of wood. Could be all kinds of stuff. Uh, and and the and the water allows it to do all these crazy cool things. Um, I don't know. It's just to to me, 
watercolor is just such a fascinating medium. It's just absolutely fascinating. I, 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 every time I, I do a painting and I see, oh, look, and I see something like this. See this big, wider area right here? So I didn't mean to do that. But for whatever reason that came out, I'm going to leave that there. I think that looks really cool. Like it's like it's a reflected uh, highlight or something like that. That's kind of a cool thing that's in there. Um, and this, noticing this and realizing that that's there and not, <laughs> and not trying to paint over that, um, is a whole nother thing, right? It's cause, excuse me, when I learned, when I started, uh, watercolors low these many years ago, I would have seen that and I'd have gone, oh, oh, it didn't turn out. I've got to go back over top of that. But now I look at it, I'm like, that's cool. That's really cool. Uh, Liza, I do so much better with oils. They're more forgiving. Hmm. Watercolor is difficult compared to, to other techniques. Yeah, but nobody's going to pick up oil paints and be a Picasso right away. Nobody's going to pick up acrylics and be, I don't know who painted acrylics. Uh, um, Andy Warhol right away, right? It's all about embracing the medium. Um, the thing that makes watercolor, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to say in my humble opinion, the thing that makes watercolor so hard is when you get a staining color, right? Like my phthalo green, I love my phthalo green. I love phthalo blue, but they are a staining color. If I put those on, it's going to stain, um, the paper and I'm never going to get it out. The alizarin crimson, I'm going to put it on. It's going to stain. I'm never going to get out, but I could ignore those altogether. Uh, right. I could paint with, um, uh, any of the cobalts, right. I could paint with ochres. I, I could paint with my sepia. They're non-staining colors, granulating, non-staining colors. And I could basically get some clear water and get that paper almost white again and take it off. We don't do it because, um, because watercolor is so additive and we're layering and layering and layering, but, um, but we could, yeah, the stain, the stains. <laughs> I have a hard time sometimes with my uh, phthalo colors, but I love them. They're so nice to me. <laughs> Usually, <laughs> the phthalos, the phthalos are, uh, they're something else. I'm I'm considering taking some of them out of out of my palette. I don't know. I don't think I will. I I've grown accustomed to the palette I have. Uh but I do realize that they're they cause problems. <laughs> uh let's see. Oh, once more once more well done. Uh oh. Once more, well done. What did I, <laughs> I don't know what I did that was well done. What did I do that was well done? <laughs> did I, my, uh, my soliloquy on watercolors? It just, I don't know. It bothers me sometimes. It's, there's nothing wrong with watercolors. It's nothing. It's, they're not easier. They're not harder. They're, they're just different. Right? Uh, it's like so many people play golf, right? And, and, uh, and I play golf. I love golf. Everybody goes, oh, oh, golf is so difficult. You can't, you know, you, the ball never goes where you want it to go and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, why are you playing? <laughs> why? Honest to God. If it's that hard, if you hate it that much, why are you playing? And then, I, and then I'm like, well, but look, but look, it's a lot easier than baseball. Right? That little white ball, it just sits there. It doesn't do anything. It's not going anywhere. You make it go somewhere. Right? You, when you hit it, it's on the tee. It's not moving when you need to hit it. It's not doing anything. Um, it's pretty easy compared to other sports. Eh, baseball, baseball, you got some guy throwing a ball at you 90 miles an hour, and you're trying to hit it out of there. Football, you're trying to catch a ball, and um, you know you got 
eight hundred pound or eight four hundred pound guys trying to jump on your head. <laughs> That's, that can't be any fun. Soccer, you got you know six guys trying to trying to clip your feet from behind and get it. <laughs> At least think off the ball waits for me to swing at it right, <laughs> right, exactly. But we do those things because. You know, okay, so, you know, it's not, whatever. We do them because they're enjoyable. They make us, they may, they must, uh, at some way, shape, and form, give us a lot of pleasure, even though we like to complain that they're hard. Again, I'm going to say, you don't really think they're that hard, but, um, but okay, I'll, I'll go with it. Same thing with water. And, and, and in golf, you're probably going to go and hit a bucket of balls every now and again at the range to try and get better. Or, you know, if you're more than a, you know, a, a weekend kind of a player, you're, you're going to go and you're trying going to try to get better. And you're going to do this and you're going to do that. And the same thing with watercolors. Okay, cool. You know, it's, sure, I'll admit it's, it's not easy, but I don't, I'm not going to admit that any of the other ones are easy. It's just a matter of enjoying it and staying with it, and we'll all get it eventually. And then you stop by my channel, and uh, I'll give you some good positive feedback, and uh, we'll all have a good time. <laughs> see how that works? I think that works great. Oh, look, yeah, see, now I'm getting right around that eye up here. I want to highlight that. I'm gonna, is my tail dry? I can put my hand here. Add some more a darker color up here. I want that eye to set back there. If there wasn't a challenge, what would be the enjoyment of it? Yes, thank you. If it wasn't a challenge, if it wasn't a, if there wasn't some um, a bit of it that was that caused a, a, a roughness or a frustration or something like that, everybody would do it. And, and then where would we be? That wouldn't, that looks like it's a big, <laughs> that looks like a big eye socket now, doesn't it? It, <laughs> it almost looks like a donut there. <laughs> Belkies, watercolors helps you be happy. Oh, it's fantastic. I love to hear that. Not sure I got that eye socket exactly right, but I'm going to go with it. You're going to know. <laughs> You're going to know his eye goes right in there. For sure. Everybody's going to know it when they see it. <laughs> Good, I get in, getting his arm on here now. I'm going to paint a little bit more while, while I got some other stuff that's wet here. I'm going to jump down to my really small brush, and I'm going to gonna do a little bit more work in his mouth this is I'm going in this is um, like almost straight uh, maroon right maroon's another one of those um, maroons of th uh, so this is maroon perylene this is a funny color we're, like we were talking color a minute ago this is a funny color this will stain somewhat kind of a I would say a semi staining color but what makes it weird is that it will sit right on top of your page there's not a lot that soaks in it'll just kind of stain part of it and then the rest of it just kind of sits right on top and it's the weirdest the weirdest thing you you all have seen me paint rust before and i think for rust, this maroon, and a little burnt umber, those two colors together make a fantastic uh, rust color. But man, if you go over it a second time or a third time, huh? It like it, it like it lifts. It wants to lift right off. And I'm so many times I'm like, oh, please don't do that. I'm trying to look because now I'm painting up here. And that's a little wet. Uh, mm -hmm, uh, can I get away with it? I'm going to try. 
I'm going to try. I'm going to be really careful. And get really close without touching. <sighs> yes. Got it, got it, got it. Uh, Belkies, what about watercolors makes you happy? Oh, that was terrible. What about watercolors makes you happy? I'm glad that they do. I would love um, to hear about what it is that, that, that makes you so happy about watercolors. Because it does for me too. It's a, it's a wonderful escape. Um, into my own little world, I can just, I can grab my paints and come out here into the studio and just create my own world out here. In fact, you all are saying, I thought that's, I think that's what you're doing right now. <laughs> oh, look, oh, you can see the muscles. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> You can see the muscles, ah, his jaw muscles. And he's yelling at the guy, hey, you stepped on my tail. If he had arms, he could raise up, he'd raise him up. <laughs> Look, he's he's starting to ball it into a fist. You can see, he's going, you. I don't know what a good name for a dinosaur is. Uh, uh, let's see, I, what did I say? A uh, uh, Brachiosaur stepped on his tail, right? So what would be a good name for a Brachiosaur? I'm not, I don't know. A good brachiosaur name. I think, um, let's see. Uh, Indian, Indian yellow. Indian yellow makes you happy? Or is that the good name for a brachiosaur? I'm not sure that's a good name for a brachiosaur. Let's see. I'm going to, my, my reference photo has a few different colors here. So it seems to be a lot of brown up around these teeth, but I'm going to drop in some of this red underneath his tongue here. Just want to keep it red inside of his mouth. I think about like that. And then let me, let me put a little color on his tongue. Indian yellow. You like Indian yellow. So Indian yellow, I believe, is an opaque yellow. Is that is that correct? I don't I don't think I've ever even used Indian yellow. I know it's out there. But like I said, I don't believe I have ever used Indian yellow. Oh look at oh he's sticking his tongue out. Ah! <laughs> like that. Oh. Oh, I'm happy. I gotta I gotta do something with his feet here, right? Okay, so I'm gonna get into a little sepia here. And I I might have gotten a bit too dark here. I wasn't exactly sure, I'll be honest with you. I wasn't exactly sure what to do with his toes. I want to make his toes stand out a little bit. Um without getting them too you know, just like a blob there. Uh, my favorite yellow is New Gambo. Yes, Natalie. Thank you. <laughs> I love New Gambo. One of my favorites. One of my absolute favorites is New Gambo. Right here it is. <laughs> I got it right there. I love New Gambo. It's such a wonderful wonderful warm uh yellow it plays so nicely with others i just new gamboge makes me so happy let's see does that look like you can see between his toes there i get a little area between his toes He's got one over here, too. In the blues, you love cerulean blue. Uh, Belky. Belky's. What? What? Uh, so. 
I'm not even, I, I have cerulean blue here. I'm not quite honestly, I'm not sure. Oh, I have cerulean blue deep. So mine is cerulean blue deep here. It's not a true, well, it's a true cerulean, but it's a little bit different. Um, I cerulean, it's a nice color. Uh, I think almost all of my skies are done with cerulean. Or some bit of cerulean. It's a pretty nice, pretty nice color. Don't feel as strongly, I will be honest with you, about cerulean as I do about New Gamba. <laughs> See, here's my... Gamba, I made this up, so I made this up uh, when, this is how old this set is, um, M. Graham didn't make new Gamboge, they just made Gamboge, and it was a bit fugitive, although it seems to be holding up really well for me. Now they make new Gamboge, which is not fugitive, and then my Cerulean Blue is Cerulean Blue Deep, so it's a little bit darker of a color of Cerulean than is the true cerulean if i'm being honest with y'all okay uh oh i can't tell you how happy i am with this with this mouth up here i think that looks fantastic and i know his i know his eye has like a giant socket there but I like the way that looks too. I'm going to actually add a little bit more color just on this side of that eye socket. This is where it, this is where it really gets fun for me. Right? We've started to to lay out these shapes. Right? We know um, how this eye socket is starting to look. Now we can if we want to we can start to really give some contour to um, to his I, snout, I guess. I don't know what to call this. To his snout. There you go. I add that on there. All of a sudden, oh, now there's now there's uh, more going on up here, right? Now there's a lot more going on. And we can kind of manipulate the shape of this to to make it look like whatever we want. There. Are, now, kids, there's there's more going on. <laughs> I'm all I'm all excited. There's extra bits and things happening here. Let's see. I'm gonna put one right here. I don't I don't know if this is the right thing to do or not. But all these little things are just gonna start to add some texture onto onto this guy into an area that may you know maybe doesn't have the most texture right maybe we can see a couple of little ribs here let's just kind of put these on and just a really a gentle blend here we don't need too much oh yeah. let that come all the way down all the way down yeah this is <laughs> this is I'm gonna, I'm gonna oh but look look <laughs> <laughs> you, Natalie, you use a whole bunch of different brands. What are your favorite brands of watercolor? We all know mine. We all know mine. Mine, mine is here. Mine is M. Graham. Mine will never change, more than likely. I've been super happy with my M. Graham paints. So I don't foresee that I'm... In fact, I, I just bought... Um, God, I don't know how many dollars worth of um, Daniel Smith paints. And I, and I hate to say it. I don't use them. I, there's, there's, I, it's, if you're going to ask me, there's nothing wrong with them. I just don't enjoy using them. I, I couldn't. I couldn't give you an exact reason why. I don't think they're as good, but 
I don't. I don't know how much money I spent on those. A couple years ago, I bought bought a big set of them. I, I've got. I, I bet I've got <clears throat> twenty or so tubes of uh, Daniel Smith paints. I, I don't know that I'm ever going to get them out. I'll get them out. I'll get them out because I'll futz around and play around with it. <laughs> I don't know that it's going to instill in me um, the the fun, like, um, like uh, Belkis, you like Daniel Smith and M. Graham. Uh, let's see. I got I want to paint his hand here, but I need to make his hand a different color than what's already there. I think maybe I'm going to mix in, let's make this a dirty uh, ochre color by mixing in a little of this sepia. I think this will do it. This is going to be his, the color of his hands. I'm already, their hand, his fingers. No. Claws, hands. They are hands, right? They're hands-ish. Let's call it, let's go with that. Hands-ish. Probably get away with not really doing much on them. Is that tail dry? That tail is dry. Right? I think I can just put a little color and then basically pull all of that up. There we go. Look, I just dropped a little tiny bit of color on there. Oop, oop, oop. And pulled that straight up and it kind of works out. Let's see. I started with Turner's because they're affordable. I still like them a lot. A Mission Gold. Oh, yeah, yeah. Art Whale, Winsor & Newton colors. And Core. Core's the one that makes their own binding agent. Do you like your Core colors? I always wanted to get Core. But Core is so expensive. I don't know why they want to make it expensive. Hey. <laughs> Uh, you, you all, Belky, you also like like to try others. I think I'm all for trying uh, other other paints, other brands, other everything. Why would you not? You might find one you like better. There's a great chance you'll find some that you like better. Let's see if I can do some toes down here. I'll just leave a little highlight here so you can see where you know his toes come up around the claws here and I didn't want to I didn't want that to go away completely if, if I had just painted that same color um, I had a feeling that it would just end up being like a blob at the end of his foot down here so that's why I and it didn't go with that same color. That's why I left the painting like it is, right? So I can paint this kind of at the end or after I've done the rest of the foot anyways. There we go. That I think that pretty much sums it up. I left a little bit of just a little bit of white space there. So that you can see uh so that you can see the difference between the toes and the rest of his feet. <clears throat> All right, and now we've, I want to do a little bit of extra, so some, a little bit of, you know, a little extra texture here and there. I want to get on to this guy. Susie Moon is here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh, good. Oh, uh, 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 um, Natalie, I didn't even look up. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you got to tell me. <laughs> I need, I need a moderator to tell me, hey, you should look up and answer a question. 
Let's see. Um, and watercolors are demanding everything is expensive. That well, that is true. Uh, let's see. Core are very vibrant, right? The binder allows them to flow beautifully, but they can overpower other brands if used together. I can see that. I like that Golden is based out of the part of New York where I grew up. Oh, okay, that's fantastic. Um, uh, yes, the the the. the <laughs> The cores are incredibly vibrant. Um, and I, you know, selfishly, I'm going to say I, I like that they're made in the, in the United States because sometimes it doesn't seem like we make a whole lot of stuff here. So I'm always glad that uh, we do make some things still. I'm going to put on few lines here some will be greener some will be uh, a little bit browner right I'm gonna tr I'm just trying to define a few areas here and there without trying to put in too much detail I don't I don't think we need uh, too much detail in here but I think a little bit of detail here and there wouldn't hurt us. Uh, and Belky's you are saying core is, you're liking core stuff too. The core, core stuff is cool. They sent me at one point in time this little sample kit of, of core stuff. You know, I, I don't know if you've ever seen it. It's like a little fold of paper with a couple of dots of paint in there. And I was like, oh, I wanted more than that. <laughs> oh, come on. Can I have a little bit more, please? And I was like, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go in and get some of these core paints. It'll be great. And then, uh, and then I saw how much they were and I went, oh. <laughs> uh, oh, the owner of Golden is cool. Oh, that's good. That I'm glad. I hope he's a an artist or a former artist too. Um, and he, it's always nice when the the people who run the the companies are 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 users of their product and they're good at what they do and that kind of stuff. Uh, so I hope I hope he's a he's like that. What do we? Oh, we got a few more people in here. Okay, so we got. Um, uh, <laughs> I've been, I've been looked at how many people are here and I'm, I'm sorry if you've been here for a while and haven't, uh, haven't paid any attention to anybody. If you're here and, uh, if you're up to it, say hello. Uh, um, ask me about anything that you want. I, I'm, I'm always happy to answer questions for, uh, for just about anything for as long as I'm on here, I'll, I'll answer Pretty much anything. If you don't uh, ask questions, the only the only thing is, you're gonna have to listen to me. Continue on. I, I don't know how much longer we're gonna go with this uh, 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 painting. I think we're we're closing in on the end of it, anyways. I don't know that we're quite to the end, but we're getting there. Let's see, uh, he's got an ear right back here somewhere. We're getting in close to the end on this guy, so uh, now is your chance. Oh, I gotta put on. So I'm not gonna use black. Let's see. Somebody asked me last week or the week before if I used white, and and I don't have a problem with white gouache on a painting, but I really don't like black. Black's the one. I have I have black over here, up in that corner. But I just don't, I don't enjoy using the black. Uh, let's see. They have a studio in upstate New York and they invite artists to come and intern. Oh, that's fantastic. Good for them. That actually makes me happy. All right. I'm putting in some black, uh, some black claws on there on the on the his hands whoop i'm gonna leave the claws on his feet white 
<laughs> you don't, Natalie, you don't even keep black on your palate, right? I would rather mix a couple of my neutrals together and and get uh, get the right color. I just, I don't know. I, I use it from time to time, but I, I always feel a little uh, when I do. <laughs> I want to give a little color to his teeth here. Not a lot. I just, you know, when I was talking to him, it had been a while since he had been to the dentist. And I didn't want to mention it, but he had a little plaque buildup in there. You know, you know how that is. That old nugget. So if we can get a little bit of color on here for his teeth. Um, we'll just do that. A few of them on there. If, there. if there's an extra white spot on there or something, there you go. I don't know. That's probably, you can't even hardly tell. Look, white. Uh, I'm, I'm pointing at the white down here. Yeah, white teeth here. Yeah, well, it's right next to the white. <laughs> it's all, the whole rest of it is white, Michael. Of course. <laughs> Green stuff between us. Yes, right. Right. As you can. You know, a little bit of something he ate yesterday is still hanging in there. I don't know. Something there. And, uh, and one thing I've done more and more lately, and I don't... I, I took a class. with. I was lucky enough to take the class. I, I didn't have to pay for it. And, and I don't even remember the guy's name to say the truth. I, 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 that's a terrible thing to say. Um, but his art was, uh, wonderful. Um, he was an artist out of LA. He came up to my town to put on a, a watercolor class for a whole bunch of, um, architects and uh and they invited me uh to take the class with them and it's, i was super grateful for that um and he he had one uh, one cup of water for his entire uh day of painting and i was like aren't you you know aren't you worried about the way that's gonna look he was like, no, because I don't worry about stuff like that. He goes, I, I'll, I'll figure it out once it gets on the paper. And for a while, you know, I, I told you I try not to let everybody else influence me. And that guy influenced me a little bit uh, because he had such interesting things to say about color itself. But the more I go along, I'm like, uh, I need clean water. So I have I actually have three... <laughs> I actually have three water bottles up here, not including uh, my drink jar, so that, you know, if I actually need an extra one, I can just always dip into that, I guess. <laughs> uh, it wouldn't be the first time I've done it. Let's see, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a little extra something off of his neck right here. Oh, and I need to get... Phew, look, he's got a whole eyeball up there I haven't done anything with. Oh... Oh, let's see, let's get some color up here in his eye. Uh, his eye is going to be, part of his eye is going to be this ochre color. Should make it red like he's mad, Rawr, like he's going to shoot lasers at somebody. <laughs> but I'll come back and I'll put a little, um, I'll put a little black in that. Uh, as soon as I'm done with a little playing around uh, down here. Um, now I've forgotten where I was at. Oh, right around here somewhere. So you want to kind of a line here. Right, he's turning and that skin is, is tight and his muscles are pulling um, some of his skin there. I want to have a little bit of a, put a little bit more color in there. Come on. Come on, Michael. What are we doing? Let's just, there we go. 
bit more, just about like that. Ah, uh, does that help? Well, that helps a little bit. That helps a little bit. And the other thing I do, and I've always done this, and I, I got criticized at one point for it, and, and now I would just kind of push back and go, whatever. Um, but uh, some people like to uh, gauge their, their water uh, coming out of the water glass, right? Maybe they dip their brush on something or they shake their brush off to the side. Maybe. Me, I've always got an extra towel. <laughs> so I go into the water. I, look, I've got, I've got this. I go into the water. I come here and I dip my brush off and then I wipe it on here. I, I do like a, a dual kind of a thing just to make sure that the water level is exactly what I want it to be on my brush. And even then, sometimes it's not exactly where I want it to be. That's okay. That's part of it. All right, uh, I should put a shadow underneath this guy so he's not just standing in uh, on thin air, right? I, I probably should do that. The, the sunlight is coming down this direction-ish. Like this, it's like coming down like this. The sun is coming down at this angle, so his his shadow isn't going to go out too too far. Ah, uh, this is the worst part for me. I don't know, I I don't feel like I do shadows all that well, and I'm always a little self conscious of shadows. <clears throat> do I give him a hard edge? Do I give it a soft edge? Do I? Give it kind of a, like a deckled edge. Do I put water on beforehand? Do I try and smooth it out afterwards? How do I do it? I, I'm always a little, let's just. So if ever any of you out there get a little, uh, whoo, how do I do it? Uh, realize um, I, I feel your pain. Shadows to me are not always the easiest. All right, so uh, we're going to start our shadow here. It's going to come out. About like this. I don't think it needs to be huge. Nobody is telling me to not do this. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to keep going. Nobody's here to tell me any better. Let's see. I'm going to I'm going to put his tail out like just about like this. And the rest of him is going to come over here. Let's see, that can come out there, across the top. This will help his um, white uh, toenails stand out a little bit too so there we go that's like a benefit <laughs> he's standing right there he's there's his tail oh his tail i don't think his tail is quite right but uh but that's okay let's make his tail touch his leg there all right there we go <laughs> oh it should go up that way shouldn't it Oh, uh, all right, whatever. It's there now. Well, at least he's got a place to stand, and he's not a Macy's balloon. <laughs> right? Uh, the shadow grounds him a little bit. It just, it, I, uh, so for so long, and I still like it, uh, I don't want uh, a whole lot to take away from the subject. The subject in this instance is the T-Rex. So I, I never put 
backgrounds on or I, not, not never, but, uh, you know, rarely put a background on or didn't put shadows on or something like that. But if you do put a shadow on, it really does make him set in something. Um, my wife would, uh, my, she would always yell at me. You have to put, you have to put something on there. He's got to be, he, you can't just have him floating. And I'm like, I like the look of him floating, but now, you know, more and more when I do it, I guess I do like the look of him sitting in something. Okay. He's got a little eyeball in there. Can you see his eyeball? There it is. Just that little eye and whoops, whoops going up. There you go. I think, uh, honest to God, I think he looks fantastic. I'm, I'm totally stoked with the way he's turned out. I like the way he looks up there. I like the way he looks down here. I'm going to sign my name somewhere on this one. There we go. And I am going to call this guy done. Uh, I can't tell you how much fun I had painting this with you all this evening. Uh, Belkies, Natalie, Susie, Thirsty, I don't know who else is up here. Uh, didn't we have Liza was here? Carrie was here. I think that's all. Everybody who's, uh, who's been talking, um, chatting through this episode. Thank you so much for joining me and making my Wednesday night an enjoyable Wednesday night. Um, I, I appreciate you all taking some time out, uh, to spend it with me. I hope I made your Wednesday evening a bit more enjoyable or Wednesday morning. If you're from Australia, uh, making that, uh, an enjoyable time. I will be back here next Wednesday with another painting. I probably now I'm probably going to do a funny painting or some such thing. Um, like a, uh, I don't know, a f fish in a raincoat, a uh, turtle with a turtleneck. I don't know, something like that. Uh, a whale holding an umbrella. I, I don't know, something fun. Um, just for something different. Uh, but we'll see. I will announce it Monday or Tuesday next week. I'll, I'll put it in Discord. I'll put it, uh, in the community channel here on YouTube. Uh, I haven't done this the past few weeks. Down below are links to social media, to my website, to a uh, place you can donate if you, if you feel up to that. No pressure for anybody to do that. Um, and, uh, and I think that's about all I have. I can't think of anything else. Um, that's what I have for you this evening. Thank you all so much and we will see you next week until then <laughs> bye bye